Sometimes we have data that is made of multiple pieces that logically belong together. For example, here we have some information about our drink choices. Notice how we have four groups of data, each of which has the same three pieces. In blue, we have Drew's drink choice. The first piece is the type, in this case a hot chocolate. The next piece is the size, in this case 16 ounces. Finally, any additions. In Drew's case, he wants whipped cream. Below it in pink are my choices. I also want a hot chocolate with whipped cream, but in a smaller size of only 8 ounces. Then we have Nick's choices in yellow and Kyle's in green. When we have a situation like this, we would like to group the pieces of data together into one logical piece of data, like this. Here we have one piece of data for Drew's choice, one for mine, one for Nick's, and one for Kyle's. These groupings are called tuples, which is what you are going to learn about now. These tuples all have the pieces of information inside them in the same order. You may also hear tuples pronounced tuples. Both are correct ways to say it. Drink type is first for all of our tuples, followed by drink size, and last, any additions. So what are tuples? They are a built-in sequence type in Python, and they're typically used for grouping together pieces of data that go together to form some logical larger element. In our previous example, this was the different aspects of a drink choice being grouped together to completely describe the choice. Within one tuple, the elements may have different types of data. In our previous example, the name of the drink and additions to the drink were strings, while the size of the drink was an integer. Tuples are immutable, which means we cannot modify them once they've been created. We can't add on to them, we can't remove from them, and we can't update the individual elements. Here's a link to the documentation if you need to read more about tuples. Now let us break down the syntax of tuple creation. Each tuple is written with parentheses, around a comma-separated list of the elements in that tuple. Note that the parentheses are a required part of the tuple creation syntax. There are a few unusual cases for tuple creation. These are not as important as the others, but we mention them for completeness. You can make an empty tuple by writing empty parentheses. This tuple has no elements inside it. If you ever want to write a one-element tuple, you need to put a comma at the end so that Python can distinguish it from just having parentheses for order of operations. You can also create a tuple from any other sequence of elements by calling the tuple function. The tuple function will get each element out of the sequence that was passed to it and build a tuple from those elements. For example, if we do tuple of string ABC, then the tuple function gets each letter from the string and builds a tuple with three elements, A, B, and C. Now let us look at the semantics of tuple creation. We start with an empty frame for whatever function we are in and do a A equals an empty tuple. We'll draw that tuple outside of the frame. It is in, in an area called the heap and the value inside A's box is an arrow pointing at that tuple. We are going to talk a lot more about these arrows and their importance when we learn about lists. Next we do b equals the one element tuple with the number one. We draw that in the heap and point an arrow at it too. We then assign c to a three element tuple. We write that in the heap with the three elements in parentheses. As we mentioned, this call to tuple will split a, b, c into the letters inside it and make a tuple from those. So we would put that three element tuple in the heap and point an arrow at it. We can access the elements of a tuple by indexing it with square brackets. To see this, let us start with a frame and create a tuple with three elements. On the next line, we are going to print C square brackets one, which is read C at one. These square brackets index the tuple to get a particular element from it. Tuple indexing starts at zero, so element one is the second element in the tuple, in this case, the string two. Accordingly, C at 1 evaluates to the string 2, and we print out 2. Next, we print C at 0, which is the number 1. Then we print C at 2, which is 3.14. We can also iterate over the elements of the tuple with a for loop. The for loop specifies the variable we want to use for each element, so we create a box for it. It also specifies the tuple that we want to iterate over. We start at the first element of this tuple, which is the number 1, so the variable i is currently 1. 
We go inside the loop and do its body, which prints i. Now we reach the end of the loop, so we go back to the top and set i to the next element, which is the string 2. We do the body of the loop again and go back to the top for the next element. We do the body again and are now done with the loop as we have iterated over the entire tuple. We also want to take a moment to see passing a tuple as a parameter to a function. We start with our previous example tuple assigned to variable c in our current frame. Now we are about to call function f and pass in c. We create a frame for f and copy the value from c's box. As c's box is an arrow, we copy that value. t1 inside of f's frame points at the same tuple in the heap. We would then move our execution arrow into f and execute the statements there. In this example, we are going to index t1 at 0, which will be 1, and assign it to x. Then we will index t1 at 2, which will be 3.14, which we will add to x. This last line is a return statement. Can you tell what kind of value it is returning? That's right, this function is going to return a tuple. So we create that value in the heap. The return value will be an arrow pointing at that tuple. So when we return, the function call will evaluate to an arrow pointing at this tuple, which then gets assigned to ANS. The last thing we are going to mention about tuples is that you can assign from a tuple into multiple variables, one per element of the tuple. When you do this, Python will unpack the tuple, assigning each element to the corresponding variable. To see this, we start with the same tuple we have used in our recent examples. Note that it has three elements, and we are going to assign it to three variables, x, y, and z. When we do this, we assign 1 to x, 2 to y, and 3.14 to z.